Hello, ceramics people. Um, we today are going to make a portrait vessel. So this is one I made a while back, and I'll show you, kind of walk you through how this all works. Um, this is just one way, not the only way to do it. Before I started recording, I rolled out a slab. Now notice my slab has a few flaws, so before I do anything, it's going to take a little bit of slip and put it into those gaps, cut off a little bit of clay, and work that into those cracks. And then as always, and especially this time because I want to bend the slab, I want to make sure that it's going to bend nicely for me. So I've got my rib. And I'm going to go this way and that way across the surface. I'm going to kind of create that little eggshell, smooth out that surface. And because I'm compressing all that clay right on the edge of the outer layer of the slab, it's going to bend better and be less likely to crack. Pick it up. Roll up it, check the back. Got a little bit of repair to do there too. No worries, get out my knife. And fill that crack. A little bit of clay. It's funny, you know, you're just watching my hands. It's kind of like the Lorax. What was the guy in the tower's name, I forget, but anyway, I saw his hands too, maybe I'll make a, a thing, what do they call those things, everyone needs a sneeze, a sneeze, next, next video, a sneeze, alright, first step, I've already forgotten something, I need a ruler to make a nice bottom, since I don't have a ruler, I'm going to use my rolling pin, and that will help me create a nice flat line. Save my scraps. And I've got a tube. All right. So before we got on camera, I took this paper towel and I measured out how far around it needed to be in order to go around the tube. And I can see where my thumb was right there. This is going to be plenty uh, of distance to be able to fit around this tube. Before I put it on the tube though, I am going to wrap this tube with this paper towel. I'm just going to take a piece of tape, tape the paper towel to itself. That will allow me to get that form and then when I need to, I'll be able to slide the tube out and the paper towel will keep the clay from sticking to it. This will be my front. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to make that face on the front. It's a little shiny for it's, so it's hard for you to see. But I've got some soft clay and what I want to do is I want to kind of plan this out a little bit. Um, when I'm doing a face I know that it's going to be like a circular form so I might draw just a basic circle on to my slab of clay. And if I want it to be realistic my eyes are going to be about halfway down so I can scratch in a little line about halfway down. I can draw another line vertically to make a separation between left and right. And then I'm going to start building the features themselves. But instead of building the features on this one, what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of build around the features. So the first thing I'm going to put down is I'm going to put an eye brow. So I've rolled out a little coil, and I'm going to put that brow on that little bit of clay that I just pressed in there. And that's going to give me the upper part of the eye itself. And I can add to that even a little bit more. And I'm using like smaller coils to make this round. It might take away a little bit on the sides there as well. The second coil that I'm going to put down is going to be in the center. So I want to go halfway between what's going to be, end up being like the chin 
and the line that I put in there for the eye itself. And if I figure out about where halfway is for that, it's going to be about there. And I'm going to start to add in something that will end up being my nose. Now that's not enough to be a nose yet, but eventually it will be. Then I'm going to add some clay for cheekbones. So these are going to be on the bottom side of what would be the eye. And they're kind of like longer, sort of like football shapes, right? What I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of bend them to start to make what will look like an eye socket. I'll do the same thing on the other side so that everything's symmetrical. So there's my football shape here. Oh, did I forget to put slip on the other side? I think I did. There. Now I've got slip everywhere. I'm going to put stuff. You can see it ahead of time. So, again, I'm kind of making the eye socket there. And then I'm going to come in and I make another one of those football shapes. That's pretty good. I'm make it a little bit skinnier. About like that. Okay. That's going to go underneath the nose. And then I'm going to put two coils on either side of the cheek but not as thick a skinnier coil that's going to start to form the outside of his face on either side Big. Okay, so coil for brow, coil for nose, cheekbones, sides, and then this is the skin above the lip itself. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to start adding some more detail to this. So what I need is like a ball shape. Right. Dot of or slip on either side. And that's going to go into that socket that I just created there. Okay. Here's the other socket that I've created. Now, I've got a couple of tools. I always have my knife with me. I've always got my fork with me. And I use this tool as well. It's got one side that's pointy and the other side is slightly curved. You know, when you look at it from the side, you kind of see how it's curved. So I can take that and press down without completely flattening out that eyeball that I've just created there. So I'm going to press that so I get good contact. And then I'm going to take... Oh, shoot. I don't have my loop tool with me, but here's what I'll do. Is I will dig this out with the end of the fork. Take this fork. And I'm going to scoop a little bit of clay out of the middle of each of those eyeballs. Now, this is looking really freaky right now, right? I don't know. Like, if you take a good close look, look at how freaky that looks right now, right? But... We're going to come in we're going to soften some of those features so it's not as freaky looking. We'll get you a little bit closer here. So, it's okay. so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to replace a little bit of that clay back inside where I just scooped away the clay. So I'm going to take a little piece and I'm going to put it in there, but I'm not going to put it right in the middle move it to the side just a little bit. And that little bit of clay that I put in there is going to make it look like there's just a little bit of reflection on the eye itself. Then I'm going to take two small coils of clay. We're going to form that top eyelid. Then we're going to do the same thing on the bottom eyelid. So I've got two little coils. Okay. 
then I'm going to flatten them out a little bit, and I'm going to bend them. This one might need a little more clay, actually. And I'm going to draw with them. So they're going to go right above the eye itself. And they're going to cover that top part of the eye. So they aren't going around the eye. They're covering and touching right where I dug out that clay itself. So if you look a little bit closer, you can see how it's working. Okay. Now, there we go. Now, here I'm going to come back. I'm going to start pressing in with the back side of this tool to start to fill the gaps between some of the stuff that I've put down already so this starts to feel round and here's a decision like you could keep pressing all this stuff in until it gets completely smooth or if you look closely at that texture that's there, you could decide to leave some of that texture. I like seeing the artist's touch in the final piece. So I'm not going to get rid of all of those marks. I'm going to leave some of that so that it looks like clay. But hopefully when I finish, it also looks like a face. So you can tell that I'm not afraid of the clay itself. So we're going to do the same thing on the bottom. We're going to create two little lines with clay. One over here. Two about there. Another one over here. Two about there. Okay. And I'm going to start smushing that in. So I'm smushing below that edge. I'm not smushing the edge itself. I'm smushing below it. And I'm going to start to work that clay onto the nose itself. So went from pretty simple to kind of scary, but you can see how it's all starting to build in. Fair enough. Okay, so as you can imagine... I got to fill in these gaps and I'm going to have to do something with the nose. So let's make a nose. So we're going to make two little balls. They're going to rest on either side. So I just put these in. They look like really big nostrils right now, but they're not going to be nostrils. Actually, I forgot to slip it. So slip, slip. Two little balls, right? We're going to start to work all that clay together. I can even do this just with like my fingers. Okay. Down and into that clay that I built up for the, the mouth of the mouth. Okay. But now that makes my nose look too small and weird. Okay. So what I want to do is I'm going to come back with two smaller balls, like pea-sized balls. Three, actually. One, two, three. That's good. I'm going to go here, here, and here. So on either side of the nose, I'm going to place a ball of clay. And then top of the base of the nose. Not put another piece of clay. Okay. Then... I'm going to come back, start working those together, and when I do, I should get something that looks like nostrils on either side of the nose. So, I should be working left-handed here so it's easier for you to see. But there's his nose. Okay. Now, I want to come in with the back side of that tool, that rounded side, and I'm going to just press up and out a little bit 
on either side, up and out a little bit. Scoop some of that clay back down in there. And I'm just going to shape it lightly. And basically, I just created his nose there. And then you can get picky. You know, like, okay, I'm going to take a little piece and put it there. I feel like that's too sunken in, so let's bring that in a little bit. I don't know, but that's the basics to getting started on the nose. Now, the next thing that I want to do is the mouth. I think I'm going to get a little closer here for you for the mouth so that you can see a little bit better. So we got this line right in here, right? And we got this bridge right in here. And this shadow that this thing is casting, this is actually going to be that upper lip. So I'm going to kind of press in on either side of the lip. I'm going to try to make it go up and down like this edge goes up and then it comes down and then it goes up again and then comes back down like a lip. So I'm doing that on both sides. And I might actually dig away a little clay in the middle for that little divot above your upper lip. Now, when I take some clay and I come in, I can roll out another little coil and I've got to figure out if that's big enough. It's not quite. So I make it a little bit bigger. Again, like that football shape, right? What I'm going to do is I'm going to put that below and I'm not going to touch the edge where the lip, upper lip and the lower lip still come together. I'm going to leave it just like that. But below that, I'm going to press down with my tool. And when I do, I can make a little shadow. Soften it a little bit. And that's going to be the lower lip. So now I've got two lips. Right? And I didn't really make them. I made the skin around them. Okay. Last couple of things, and then we'll roll this guy up, and we'll have our portrait vessel. Now, of course, the thing that's missing is a chin, but beyond the thing that's the other thing that's missing is that my my person here doesn't have a lot of personality. They're just kind of blankly staring back at you. So that might be something that you want to start thinking about. You know, like okay, it looks like a person, but they don't really have much of an expression at all, right? So maybe if I wanted to try this more than once, you know, like this guy I gave him a big mouth. He was opening up, you know, big lips, that sort of thing. So you can think about that as well when you're putting yours together. Okay, so let's get some texture and maybe, you know, I could work on this a lot more. You know, I could add things that look like eyebrows. You know, I could add something that looks like hair. But for the sake of this demo, you've seen how to make eyes, nose, mouth, and all that sort of stuff. So we've got to get to the next part, which is putting it on the tube. Here's one area. And again, I forgot something, but you guys are used to that by now. So I'm walking away. I'm coming back. Now, I've been working on this for about 15, 20 minutes, right? 20 minutes. So it's dried out a little bit. So I'm going to spray it with a little bit of water. I'm going to work that water in with my rib as well to that surface. And some of the fact that it's drying can be a good thing. But when I bend it, it might end up being a bad thing and cracking on me. So I'm going to do this before I try to bend it. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that tube, okay, and I'm going to place it underneath. And here's where when you start to bend, you're like, oh my gosh, i got to fix this as I'm bending it. Because as you bend it, you'll notice like little cracks starting to open up, that sort of thing. So a smaller tube is a little harder to work with than a larger tube. But after a few minutes, I can get that side underneath. Then I can stand the whole thing up. Fix that nose a little bit. I'm going to have to put a little bit of clay 
inside the nose. And I'm going to kind of figure out where this overlaps. Oh, man. <laughs> Some of the changes that happens when you bend it. It's like, ah, I didn't anticipate that, but that's okay. All right. So I've got it wrapped around itself. So now if I take my knife, knife, I can cut through both slabs. I remove that slab and I can use that as my base. I remove this slab on the inside. And then I'm going to score the edge and I'm going to try to wrap it just a little bit tighter the second time that I'm wrapping it, I'm going to take my slip, and if I can overlap this at all, that always makes a better scene. So I'm scoring, softening, scoring again on both sides. I'm going to press this, I'm going to try to get this, yay, look at that. It overlaps. So the first time I'm trying to like loosely put it together and then cut through both sides, and then a little bit tighter the second time, then I get that overlap. Okay. So my seam now, you know, it's kind of bumpy. So here's how I fix that. Over it this way. Go over it that way. I take my rib, I'm gonna press in, and I'm gonna kind of like flex it. I'm gonna scoop, press, and go up that sleeve and then, or the, uh, the seam. I'm gonna take some of this excess stuff and put that back on there and fill in that gap. Now I'm just at that point where I got to fine tune him. Well, he's funny looking. Decide if I want the top to be level or whether I want it to be natural. Why don't we go for level on this one? He will make a uh, nice pencil base for someone. Or maybe I can make it a cup. I don't know. <laughs> Got some touch up to do. So maybe I'll touch up and then come back so you can see the final thing. Everything gets stretched when you, when you do it this way. But I'm going to take this paper towel and I kind of try to like pull it off. And if I insert my hand in there, it's strong enough now that I can just lift this right out. And there you go. Scary person portrait base. I think I like this first one a little bit better. Okay. There he is. He's a little bit more fun. This one's a little bit more scary, but I can play with them now. Make a base that will stand on, make a handle. Ta da! I got a cup that no one will want to drink out <laughs> of. All right, there you go. Portrait vessel. See you guys later.